new season 41 with a new battle pass skin for SC as well as hero balancing, strife balancing. We're going to be getting into it. Hey, now, in this video, we're going to the patch notes for the game King of Castle 5.0.4. And we have the newest battle pass skin, Estia, the Queen of Holy Light. Now, the key art i love okay now for the actual design let's just go down here and see okay here's here's that let's just see this in action buffing the leo now i must say um okay so first impressions estia has always been kind of like this where she's kind of like stationary statue and the only thing really moving is like the thing from her lantern right and i think that is the biggest disconnect for me here is there's not a lot of freaking motion you know what i'm saying like she's not moving a lot you know she has like the hand her left her left hand actually is like doing a little prayer thing so she kind of does that when she cast so i think like dynamic wise it's kind of stale and kind of boring but is that it's it's just how Estia has been right so i can't I, I don't really know how i feel about that now for the effect particles now there is some overlap where like it doesn't look that much different it's like shiny it's gold well guess what like her her normal effect is also like shiny white like kind of this fire fiery like holy light kind of color anyways and the only thing different like at first glance is like the shape right it's like this little diamond cross shape right the holy church symbol i guess and from that it just looks the same if you are regular joe schmo looking at this is not much different in terms of effect wise now when she does her ability you can see like there is like an an actual like a little spark thing going on but i mean it looks very samey is what i'm trying to get at now for her actual look i actually like it and the reason why i like it is because of the black now that is that is very interesting for me to say but like usually these skins it's like like normally like you would see where the black is maybe it's like a like a like a like another shade of gold for example and it looks very samey right and they chose black which is very interesting in contrast so I don't know. It is. It is not. Get, okay, I will, I will say it's not Gidnil tears level of of skins. Okay, it is not that bad. Is it the best? No. Do I like it? I say yes. I like it. I like it. Is it the best? I don't think so. But do I like it? Yes. Could it have been better? I think so. I I feel like they should have done something more with the particle like color. Now it, it's it's a it's a trend, dude. Like the coloring, the color palette of these skins, it's kind of hit or miss sometimes. And uh, just Estia kind of got the samey kind of look. Like I actually like how she looks. Like, but like. I don't know. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below how you guys feel about it. So I'm going to give this rate. Okay, I guess we're rating skins now, boys. I'll give this out of 10 points. I'm going to rate this. Ooh, I'm going to rate this a six and a half, man. Six and a half. I said it. Six and a half. All right. So it's the Holy Church Festival. We'll go over that. Now, season 41 balancing. I love looking at hero balances, boys. Now, if you guys are new to King of Castle, they always do hero balancing at the beginning of the season nowadays usually so if for example if you're playing a season and you're like this hero is freaking broken nine times 9.9 .9 times out of 10 they are not gonna patch that they're not gonna be hot fixing that hero unless it's actually like like broken mechanically like it's like bugged right um they're not gonna be hot fixing a balance right for example right during mid-season or whatever it's gonna if they do get a nerf it's gonna be the following season which we will actually see this uh later in this list so hero balancing i love to see it now i do have some feelings about this hero balancing so we're gonna go through it first and then i'll tell you guys how i feel about it so priya um man and also i'm gonna give you guys a lot of complaints on the way <laughs> you know i mean you guys watch this because you know you guys just you guys just like to hear me complain uh but in, in the past when they did this patch note thing when they did this when it changed like like actually changed 
they would mark it all off, right? But when they're only tweaking some numbers, they like they like highlight it, right? They kind of mark out or or something like like do they need to mark out the whole thing? Like when they mark out this thing, I don't know. Maybe it's just me misremembering. But in the past, if I my 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 knob brain is like when they crossed out the whole thing that means they are actually changing the entire effect but you can see they are not changing the effect boys they're just increasing the freaking numbers they're just making it more damage on the tick do they need to ink like what is this like a like a formatting like inconsistency i don't know let me know am i crazy i'm probably crazy originally a previous first awaken ability intense cold now if you don't know what this is this is the one where when priya does her skill it leaves the uh frost field right on the on the on the ground uh it was one of the awakening abilities used as standard when adjusting the power of other awakening abilities as time goes by um yes power creep um uh has this has been slightly disappointing option compared to freezing armor accordingly the damage amount of damage inflicted by intense cold is increased now Okay, I'm gonna save at the end, boys. Oh, we're gonna go through the whole thing. I'm gonna save my comments to the end, boys. Um, so Yan, all right, Yan. So Yan, see, they did, they did it again. They crossed out the whole thing, making me think that they're actually retooling the awakened ability. But no, it's the same thing. But they're tweaking the number. That is that that they're increasing now. To be fair, this right here, the 60 more percent is kind of crazy. Um, but in the case of overflow, when Yawn's first awakened ability compared to backflow, it is more advantageous when there are many units on the field. As the length of battle gradually shortens and the number of units become less, the situation in which this awakening is chosen uh, more effective than backflow have become less common. Accordingly, we increase spell power. Okay, uh, Rahawk, same thing. They freaking cross out the whole thing i mean you, you guys you guys get it you guys freaking get it but they're only increasing the damage of the second awakening ability by 30 percent so rahawk second awakening ability rigid claws changes rahawk uh whose existing role was a debuffer into a dd however as kgc average damage amount continued to increase it became Rah uh difficult for rahawk to play the role of a dd with this bonus accordingly they increased it agath uh more damage reduced See, like See, they, they just changed the percentages here, but they didn't mark it off. Why Why didn't they just mark this entire thing off and then did another? It's a formatting inconsistency, boys. Awesome piece. Please, awesome piece. Uh, Agath is a support tank that pr uh, protects the front line by taking damage to enemies based uh, on the highest physical strength. Uh, however, due to the continuous new updates, other me methods such as HP drain, visibility, CC become more effective than reducing damage using Agath. Accordingly, the damage reduction value has uh, been buffed. Okay. Nabella now is very interesting because Nabella is uh, now if you follow my tier list she is pretty down there in the tiers but they are see they did the freak I mean bro they crossed it out and all they're doing is making the damage dealt um better right they are making the penalty for using this less so it's only 30 percent minus damage instead of the minus 40. so in case of nabella's second awakening ability um nabella has the advantage of being able to maintain the position of friendly line however because its damage reduction amount is too harsh it does not get selected accordingly the amount of damage inflicted by desert charge is increased wait increase oh they're just saying they they they, it's okay okay I, I get you awesome piece increase i get you i get you i get you it might be a translation thing uh kathy is receiving a buff that is kind of crazy but i do think she needs a little uh a little push for sure so they are changing the numbers only okay changing this is her second awakening ability by the way and then they are buffing it by 20 percent more ricochet damage uh kathy's second awakening ability strafe is not chosen often because of the risk of making ricochets unpredictable is excessive compared to his increased damage output therefore we are increasing the ricochet damage so that stray becomes a viable option
I'm saving it, bro. Let me save it. Let me save it. Ian. Ooh, they are actually retouching Ian. That's kind of crazy. So they are adjusting his second awakening ability. Okay. Um, they are they're 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 not changing it, okay? They're just buffing the number. All right, boys. Buffing the number. They're increasing the damage to 10% for each hit to 15%. Now let's see what they have to say. Ian's second awakening ability. Is an awakening ability for dealing damage to small number of enemies such as boss battle so if you're using if you guys are using ian if you've been playing if you do raid you know that ian you use awakening to use this one okay um this becomes more effective than the first awakening as the duration of battle gets longer however considering the short duration of king god castle battle in general it is difficult for awakening 2 to perform better than awakening 1 in most battles therefore the in damage increase amount of confrontation is increase to reflect this lack of benefit compared to awakening one for it all decrease spell power by 60 percent man and that is crazy that these so it's kind of interesting that in a previous timeline awesome piece would let this guy just rock for many 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 seasons until actually nerfing him and it is kind of crazy that they they are nerfing him and you see at the bottom right here kind of she's getting nerfed the pat the season after she was released which is crazy which is crazy usually they let that rock for a while until actually touching um and oh man we'll get to it we'll get free can get to it so pharrell is actually getting a decrease in spell power because he had he has the most spell power base spell power in the entire game the spell power of awakening one is lower because the accumulated damage is higher than expected compared to the skill use frequency so decrease spell power by 16 percent so at level one star one it is 60 instead of 70 now will this destroy him and all of a sudden like make him d tier 16 percent i don't think so i don't think so it just makes him not as insane crazy as when he was first released um and will he be still strong i definitely think so i definitely think so so yeah i don't think this really it, uh, man it's kind of interesting because usually when they when they do uh nerfs like this it is not by 16 percent. it's usually like five percent ten percent in the past and then eventually like over like you know freaking three seasons then it reaches the, like a 16 percent nerf right they went straight 16 percent, which is kind of crazy right and it, it's 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 different than how it has been in the past so i think for is still gonna be really good now karam she just got released last season boys like literally two patches ago as a recording of this video and she already freaking got nerfed that is how strong she was and it is kind of crazy because like i said usually when new heroes come out and they're broken usually they're not touched even if they're broken for another freaking whole entire season like a following season entire season then you will actually see nerfs um like so for example kathy for example like when kathy was released she was so broken um and if i remember right they didn't nerf her until uh, definitely not the following season boys i i'm pretty sure man i'm pretty freaking sure i could be wrong I could be wrong, but Karam got a actually a pretty big nerf in my opinion. So let's just look at Karam right now. So um, the evasion value, it used to be 50% flat. Didn't matter the tier, nothing, right? Now it's scaled, right? So at tier 1, 2, it's 20%. And then the following is 30%. Then for tier 5, 6, it is 40%. Now tier 7, it is your normal 50%. So you can still reach that OP level base value 50% uh, evasion. And this does not account for obviously the potential ability that um, adds 20% to that, right? So you can look at these numbers uh, as plus 20. So you can look at these numbers as 40, 50, 60, 70, right? And this is pretty freaking huge huge right um because more likely than not you're gonna have caught at 
tier five and six. That That is just common, right? And you're gonna get 60%, right? And I'm getting 60% again by adding the uh, potential ability that adds plus 20 evasion, right? So 60%, now 60% feels balanced in my opinion like just just thinking about it now the patch is live as we're recording this video so i haven't done testing or anything like that but on the face value 60 percent feels good i think the 60 percent feels fair now this 20 this this tier one through four that is when it's a little like she's definitely not as great now 50 percent is okay um but 60 percent feels pretty balanced now now you can still reach the 70 percent which i think is very 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 strong now it is it's kind of they they scaled it like this right now because of this i think she's definitely more quote unquote in line slash balanced Okay, I think this is a good change for her. Um, they, this is kind of crazy because we are living in an era where where Awesome Peace is nerfing and buffing heroes, or at least nerfing heroes the way I would kind of nerf them. <laughs> and I, I kind of have like a like I don't know my 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 suggestions in nerfing heroes is usually like kind of harsh and it is kind of it's kind of awesome to see them see uh you know see them adjusting heroes kind of how i kind of see it so it, i i mean kind of lovers you, you're kind of sad but i think this definitely was a needed change because they really need to adjust this 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 evade this new evasion thing that they introduced to the game so i think that's good now uh, another big change is her awakening ability so it no longer activates when no attack is possible aka when karam is stunned cc'd or whatever right she, uh in the previous patch she would still activate her awakening ability when she's getting hit while being cc right like by fear or whatever so now it no longer activates when karam herself can actually attack so basically uncc'd right or whatever right because her ability is essentially like a normal attack so if she can't do a normal attack her awakening ability can't trigger right so that means if her awakening ability can't trigger she can't get that hp drain from it right that's what made her so freaking broken right so let's just see here so her awakening is an effect that is activated based on evasion so it is activated even in states such as stun or knockback that makes it impossible to attack now the awakening is also considered a form of attack and will not be activated um when doing so in addition uh her evasion rate has been lower compared to before but can the probability has been changed depending on her uh scaling right combined with level four characteristic at seven stars you can still achieve the 70 percent evasion as before which is a nice balance now um Let's just go through the rest of it. So, Shelda, they are increasing her spell power, and then her they are adjusting, her, they are nerfing her a uh, mighty blunt generation uh, by one for all levels. This is a very interesting change. So Mighty Blocks provided through Absolute Wheel. This is Awakening One, by the way, is increasing in value as the overall damage. Uh, King God Castle increases as a result. At this point, Awakening 2 is not chosen over Awakening 1. Accordingly, Shelda's spell power is greatly increased and the number of Mighty Blocks obtained through Awakening 1 is reduced. Kirtan, <laughs> additional attacks to be required to attack, um, add one attack when using ability is flat now. So it's 18 percent which um in my opinion neither i mean to to be honest you're not gonna even really feel it to be uh, to be completely honest you're really not gonna feel it too too much to be honest so kirdan's ability is not affected by cc while in use has the characteristic of greatly increasing movement speed hp through um awakening ability performing various roles without the help of other heroes taking kirdan's functionality into account the additional attack speed required per additional attack is adjusted so that it does not decrease depending on tiers in order to lower the overall performance of his ability 
Okay, before we get into this, before we get into this, man, well, how long have we been going for? Man, we've been going on for, uh, okay, so too long, too long, boys. I gotta talk faster. I gotta talk freaking faster. Um, So, how I feel, okay, so, I love Awesome Peace, all right? I love Awesome Peace. When I read a lot of, now, now, grant, you know, to be fair, I'll, some of these, some of these um, changes are, are good. It makes sense. A lot of these changes and the accompanied text of reasons of their change, and now it could be translation error, it could be like a weird localization thing. It feels like, at least for me, it feels like the person or the group of people who were in charge of this hero balancing and um, and made the reasonings for it, you know, assuming it's the same people, they are not well in tune with King God Castle and and have they haven't really been playing it for a while like it feels like they've been working on another game for example and then they were pulled over to help with the hero balancing and this is what they came up with and then these were the reasonings uh that they came up with um based on data alone and that's what it feels like okay so i'm gonna go let's go through it again now that I've shared my 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 feelings on this, so Priya, you're not. This doesn't change anything. This doesn't change anything, boys. Anything. Maybe you can. You know. I for me, I this when I see this, I'm like, cool. Maybe I can try a fun Priya hero boss raid build. That that's it, boys. Cool, right? That's how I feel about that. Yawn. Now I have to admit this is kind of freaking crazy. This this makes me actually want to like try Awakening One over Awakening Two. So kudos, kudos. This this one's good. I'll mark this as good. Okay, I I agree. This one, you're not gonna feel it. You're not gonna freaking yep. You're still gonna use Awakening One nine times out of ten. You're still you're using Awakening One, boys. I. I, I mean, 70%, 100%, cool. I mean, that's better if I want to do that a niche Rahawk solo carry build. Sure. Still doing Awakening 1, dog. I, just, I mean, I Agath. Um, increase uh, the, uh, the, the damage that she can protect from, right? I love Agath. Um, I welcome the change cool um agatha is still being used i i think this this is a good change okay Th this is good this is good oh nabella nabella all right um so they are saying that the damage d reduction was too harsh that it does not get selected so they reduced it by 10 more percent as in like you know they gave back damage i will tell you right now it is still never going to be used and nabella is still going to have freaking issues boys <laughs> <laughs> kathy bro i don't understand what am i playing the wrong game am i playing on a wrong patch what is going on why is kathy receiving a buff now i do think that rickish like she needs like a a, a like a slight buff um a slight like a, a slight okay and this is a slight buff in the direction that i would like cool um i welcome this but the reasons why they give why they're buffing it in the first place is the the confusion right straight awakening 2 is not chosen often isn't isn't awakening 2 like the default chosen thing for kathy i mean it's the default chosen but the, yeah, there are some situations you want to do oh, uh, awakening 1 but awakening 2 the ricochet one is the one that everyone uses Am I, am I wrong? Am, I mean, you guys can comment down below. Like, you know, Nob, you're, you're, you're freaking on copium again. You know what I'm saying? Like, but... Well, Strife is not chosen often because of risk of making ricochets unpredictable is excess... What? I don't know, bro. I don't... This one... Okay, this one's like a half and half, okay? 
the the chain the buff is welcome the reasons why they're buffing it is like i have no freaking clue man i have no clue where that's coming from like i said it could be a localization error translation i don't know now ian one is uh it's the same situation i i i like okay so like the kathy one it it's not gonna change anything because right now everyone uses freaking second awakening right dancing bull is the re the this awakening too right to a random enemy the ricochet one right i, I mean i mean it's not gonna change anything P people are still gonna be using strafe right and ian they are wanting to buff this so people will use it more than awakening one i will tell you freaking right now like seven times out of ten you're using awakening one is because the freaking aoe one shot you know a lot of damage that's what people love right the only reason you use awakening two is freaking raid mode bro like awake like this is bro like uh, like I, I i don't get it i don't freaking get it man i don't get it like people are using awakening two but for raids by increasing the damage all of a sudden it doesn't make the people using awakening one using awakening two because you don't use awakening two other than any anywhere else but raid or like i, I imagine like competitive uh tower trials or something right i i i don't know the logic man i don't know if you're like like this okay like the same thing the the change i welcome cool more raid damage reasoning is just out of left field dude i have no freaking clue i have no clue uh pharrell i welcome the change as well i mean it's it's unfortunate that he has a reduction in damage um but this is self-explanatory cool Kadam, this is a good change the reasonings are sound cool Shh, the shelter one i do i don't get guys I absolutely do not get the shelter. This is probably the worst one, in my opinion. Um, now, I welcome the spell power change. Cool, right? Very cool. But why? Why did you have to do this? Did you really have to do this? And the reason why they did this was because they wanted people to use Awakening 2. Explosive Will. What? Like, we're talking about two archetypes, two different freaking archetypes for Shelda. If she, like, the Shelda is like one of those heroes that there's not many in the game where, depending on the awakenings that she chooses, she becomes a tank or like a damage dealer, right? I mean, you know, you know technically you could do Awakening 1, Great Rift, you know, Magic Arrow and make that a damage. You know, I'm not talking about that, okay? But just on phase value, Awakening 1, Tank, Awakening 2, Damage Dealer, okay? Just look at it black and white. We're not talking about like Great Rift. You can do Awakening 1, Magic Arrow, okay? Um, but the, she is one of those heroes. And I think you should split the two. You shouldn't make one worse because you want other people to do the other one right and it doesn't make sense for shelter because if she does one she's technically a tank and the other one she's a damage dealer right so in this case yeah sure increase the spell power right but why would you touch the tank part the tank awakening bro i, I don't get it i mean yeah like because she they increase the spell power that means that the shield that she gets will get higher so they should nerf this so it's kind of like yeah i don't know man i don't know i don't know and guess what people will still not use explosive will besides meme builds i don't i don't get it i don't freaking get it kirdan this is literally you're not gonna feel it in my opinion i don't think so i don't think you know I mean? if you do feel it in the future you're like nah this is, is night and day cure dan sucks now i mean you can let me know in the comments but in my opinion phase value I haven't tested out yet patch isn't live this you're not gonna freaking feel it cure dan is still gonna feel freaking broken and it is insane how they did not do this to him yet cure dan has not been nerfed boys he has been receiving buffs or like 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 neutral changes and it is absolutely insane and I, I believe this is their attempt to try to balance this hero right and i feel like kirdan might be a little hard to balance because of their archetype and design philosophy when they designed him 
But in my opinion, the way you make him a bit more balanced is to make him a 45 mana freaking hero, bro. I don't know. I don't freaking know. Make him a 45 mana hero. What can I say? Um, okay, so hero adjustments in Sharp Battlefield. These will go by a little faster. So um, Agath is damage taken down, which makes sense because they just buffed her. So you might be seeing more Agath. Um, and I love Agath. I'll probably be playing her. And then Naria actually got changed, um, you know, like net positive, right? She just has neutral. Kirdan is nerfed technically. You know, I was never a Strife Kirdan meta fan. When everyone was playing Kirdan, I had no clue why they were playing because I thought something else was way better. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, Pharrell is actually getting buffed in Strife. He is getting a 10% bonus, which is cool to see. I don't think that's going to make him meta by any means. And Kadam is actually getting adjusted. They are keeping the damage bonus, but she is getting a 10% uh, more damage taken, which is... Um, you know, she's definitely nerfed, boy. She is definitely nerfed. She takes more, even more damage now. So I think just speaking on this, she, I mean, we'll, we'll see. There's some other stuff that is compounding on this, but I think we might see a little more variety and strife in the next season. I don't think it's going to be got um all the time. I don't think so. I don't think so. I have some ideas uh, for, um, you know, my, my OG comps and things like that that I gravitate towards. And I think it might be a bit better, but I don't think Karam is going to be the end all be all um, next season, but we shall see. We shall see. Um, but the reason why is because of the following changes that we haven't gone over. So um, they are adjusting some of the summoning uh, stones. So Wraith Knight, Wraith Reaper, um, and the Void Destroyer. So this guy is the one that removes the uh, Mighty Blocks, right? This one silences your team. You can't do skills. And this one, uh, can't, you can't uh, li uh, life drain, right? Um, and these are very oppressive. Everyone sends them to you, and it is very hard to adjust. So they're actually just I'm making it fast, okay, boys? I'm making it fast. They are changing it. This is a huge freaking change, by the way. I think this might be the biggest change um, of this patch in my opinion so usually um the effect is that you can't so for example in sanguine plague the hp drain becomes unavailable five seconds at the beginning of battle that is the usual effect now they are changing it to where after five seconds begin so five seconds is normal battle after that then a six second, the the uh, the curse hits in for six seconds. So after five seconds, there's a five second delay. Then it goes on for six seconds, right? And that is the change for all of these boys. And of course, the Wraith curse, it makes it like obnoxiously long, right? So that is over across uh, these guys. And because of that, I think it just me personally, me personally, I think it makes it way harder by doing this. Now, in their hopes is to 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 have this feel easier. Now, in my opinion, I think this will make it feel harder. Um, a little easy in the beginning, but harder later. Um, and the reason why is because I much prefer having like the sanguine kick in at the beginning of battle and then and then like stun lock the team or whatever or or you know because there are there are seconds in battle where there are like a lot of units are teleporting or walking or doing like that so a lot of the game 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 time is burned by the start of round like maybe a second or two right um and now after five seconds begins you guys are already fighting bro and then boom sanguine kicks in for six seconds and you're just toast because at that point like you need you're you're surviving through full six seconds and guess what um freaking chapter nine boss he's gonna one shot you right and i think it's it's so much harder now in my opinion it is much harder doing it this way 
Now, I haven't played it yet, right? Like I said, patch isn't out yet. So this is just face value. I think it's harder. I honestly think it's harder. So silence. Now, the only the, out of these three, the only one that I think it actually benefits is Mighty Block comps, Rin comps, um, because of Void Destroyer. You don't instantly die at the beginning of round, right? That means that you can go ahead and try to destroy the, the freaking laser guys, right? And then survive because the mighty block piercing, the piercing uh, shield or whatever. Pier yeah, the, pier the piercing shield, the mighty block doesn't get stripped after five seconds. After five seconds, you're good. And then when piercing shield uh, kicks in, then boom for six seconds. Right. But at that point, you should be able to, you know, like survive at least. So I think the only comp that like really uh, benefits from this is probably mighty block comps. Right. And um i'm gonna i'm just gonna share you guys a little you know knob tech um i do believe then in the next season for strive battlefield the the the, the popular combo is 1000 percent going to be um a combination or whatever with these three plus freezing totem because freezing totem can delay the opponent's carry um and then when they get out of freezing totem guess what you're getting smacked by the curses straight up it's a freaking nasty combo uh, freezing totem plus these bad boys are going to be a nightmare and you're going to be seeing it a lot next season so you know if you guys are playing stride battle for the next season you're like you, you you're getting freezing totemed and you're getting silenced right after you're like Nob called it. Nob called it, man. <laughs> Nob called it. Now you guys can do it since you guys are watching this video, of course. Um, and this is another big change. Uh, let's just speed on through this. So this is a huge change. So um, originally over time didn't really affect uh, evasion. So now that they're including evasion, they are actually adjusting evasion over time, which is huge nerf to um, directly nerf Kata, right? Especially in Stripe Battlefield, where in Kadam and Stripe Battlefield, you hit overtime, and that's why she's so freaking OP. But now, overtime actually affects Kadam's uh, evasion, right? So that's why I think that Kadam is not going to be the one true answer for everything. I think you're going to be seeing a lot of variety in Stripe Battlefield, and um, that is my take before the patch is even live. Um, and then now you can rejoin your Strat Battlefield game now, which is nice. But apparently if you get to complete a stage or something like that, but it is nice that they allow you to join a match in progress in case you force quit or something like that. And you can jump back in. Um, it might actually disconnect disconnect you altogether if you take too long. So um, at least the function is there, and Try Battlefield has been increasingly feeling better and a lot smoother. There's gonna be uh, there's a lot they need to optimize it more, dude. Like they need to if there's a game breaking thing, they need to stop Try Battlefield altogether. And just maintenance that bro like they don't they can't let it rock man um it is kind of a fiesta right now in terms of the strife battlefield optimization and how they're handling it and things like that and it's just it's a it's a nightmare right now in my opinion but it is growing pains growing pains um so they are changing the skin grading system uh just just based on skin tiers and the amount of gems and they're trying to uh, make it make more sense cool um and then there's a bundle for skins is that a sedong skin that is a sedong skin uh event bundle package huh is this an event skin that you can buy i guess so is this a new skin I guess so. And this is another huge thing. Can I rework preview? So in the next season, season 42, he will be having new skills, characteristics, awakening abilities. Oh my gosh, I cannot freaking wait, dude. Please make him like super S tier. Man, it's going to be so awesome. Um, and they're just letting us like, they're just teasing us basically. And please do this to more characters, especially the old t old guys. Man, I love to see it. Here's a scroll blessing if you want. I honestly don't recommend it, but it kind of is in there. But don't get baited. Don't get baited. Uh, this. Oh, it is. It is the new, uh, new skin. Tadong. Cool. It's cool. 
it's cool it's not it's not the best bug fixes cool um and then new chromas for chunga rahawk and Rin. All right, let's check the rest of this. Uh, vent mode. Uh, Daniel. This is the returning battle pass skins. Daniel. Uh, Daniel's cool. You know, to be honest, I, I like Daniel more than Gidneal. Um, I do like the SDO one more than this one for sure. So, um, yeah, unfortunately. But this is still a cool skin. Cool skin. You know, let me a Daniel. Uh, Mercil skin. Pretty cool as well. There's the effect. Uh, Lineheart. My boy Leo. This one's pretty OG. You know, pretty old. You know, standard, standard. Now, as a reminder, if you guys want to see any of the skins and the effects and the sound effects, it is on my channel, on my skin playlist. I'll be updating it with the new ones as well. And then here's this one. Here's the calendar if you care about it. Um, and then boom, boom, boom. Here's the raid stuff. Blade, uh, Blood Greed for solo. Then uh, Giant Mage Hero Blacksmith if you care about raid. And then here's the Grand Arena buff uh, for South Heroes and Swiftness for next uh season now please awesome peace give us the freaking heroes please <laughs> please list the heroes the south heroes and the the swiftness come on come on bro i've been i've been complaining about this for for so long uh one day one day let me know in the comments below what do you think about all of these changes especially the uh summoning stones i love me the um the freezing totem plus the curse idea uh let me know about your thoughts on the Kadam nerf and Pharrell nerf especially and all of these changes I I definitely feel like it's weird do you feel like it's weird as well what do you think about the SDF battle pass skin do you like it will you be getting it anyways let me know in the comments below as always thumbs if you like this subs if you loved it and I see you next one boys later